I'm an old-fashioned guy. I, I need two buttons in my mouse and these kind of things. Okay, so okay, uh, I'm Jordi Rambla, as the presentation says. I'm here to present you this pilot project that has just started a couple of months ago, just just before holiday. So not much has been done yet on it. Uh, it's a mix of four different concepts, if you want. So I will try to uh, introduce all of them, and then I'm open for questions. Uh, so this is talking about the EGA itself as a service. Then I would like to talk a little bit of, of this EOS C, C, uh, stuff and the EOS pilot, a little bit about the FAIR principles, and then a little bit about the project that it's trying to tie everything together in some way or another. Okay? Not, not exactly everything, but okay. It's this one. It's not all yet. If the receptor is not there, yeah, I, I know. I hate type of format. You need to put the receptor on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the EGA? The EGA is an archive of uh, human genomes that it are should be under control access, meaning that it's data that it's not public in the sense that you cannot make use of them freely. You need to request permissions in order to access the data and, um, and, and, and use it in your, in your research, okay? The access to the data is usually controlled by the Data Access Committee that is uh, supervising uh, if the applicant is a, has a project that is uh, aligned with the consent agreement that the donors of the data has uh, signed. So if you go to a clinical study, and this clinical study is about diabetes, and uh, you sign a consent agreement saying this could be used for research on other diabetes projects, then uh, the data access committee would look if, you, if your project applies or not to this context, okay? So if the thing is okay, then you are granted access, and we give you access to the uh, files, and you can start using these files on your facility or something like that. Yeah, so that's the model. The EGA is a project that is co-managed by the EBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute, and the CRG. Since uh, 2008, they started the project. In 2013, we go on board and sign them. Uh, then we are we are co-managing this thing. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so the EGA has a big number of data. We have this uh, 1,300 uh, studies, about uh, uh, 3,400 data sets, around 800 data providers, and uh, more than 10,000 data requesters. And now we are approaching the 5 petabytes of uh, size in our storage. Okay? So it's quite big. It's not enormous. It's not astron astronomically uh, big, but it's big enough to pro provoke some heritage. Okay? Well, so we are having uh, data from relevant projects in the field of genomics and, and, and mainly like these ones that are there. RD Connect, that it's mainly about uh, rare diseases, the International Cancer Genome Consortium, that is uh, about uh, a study that is trying to tie together uh, 80 different cancer types from, I don't know, maybe it's uh, 40 different countries. So it's a big project in the order of the petabyte of information. The blueprint that it's looking at the uh, hematopoietic cells, meaning all the lineages in the in the blood. Uh, so all this stuff uh, is there. So, and others like the UK 10K or the uh, Welcome Trust Sanger Case Control Consortium uh, uh, study. So it's interesting thing. But some of them, it's uh, old, let's say. Uh, you need to look into it and usually refresh it in order to, to use it, okay? Well, then there is this, this is the issue. Another topic is the European Open Science Cloud. And I, sorry for that, but I had hard times trying to summarize all this stuff about the European Open Science Cloud in a few slides, so I decided to drop the original presentation, so the change in format and so on. This presentation is not done by me, as you can see, it's this this gentleman, Brian Matthews, that uh, shared it with me. But I thought that it's better for you to have this, this information in, in the, in the uh, recording or in, in your uh, presentation folders, so you can look at it and read it in detail. I will go just quickly over it. 
So the thing has started kind of in April last year when uh, the European Commission decided that something called the European Open Science Cloud should be created in a kind of short term. So they expect to do this from this year to 2020. 2020, this should be up and running, and this should be wonderful and, and the paradise for everyone. Okay? So they published this thing that it's a kind of uh, communication, uh, this is uh, lingo, and what is the motto for that? They realized, that's a big surprise, that data in the science is not linked enough, is not shared enough, it's not uh, findable enough, it's not reproducible enough, blah, blah, blah. So all the things that you already know, okay? That the infrastructure are um, uh, disparate and, well, you know, so you can read it here. So they think we need to do something in order to make transparent for the scientific community, trying to use data from different places in different uh, facilities that are clouds or HPC or whatever, and that should be free and data should be open and these things. So they, they try to do something like that, okay, and provide better, uh, more innovation from researchers and blah. So this gentleman, Barrett Mons, that it's uh, not a colleague, but I, I know him, uh, has been uh, appointed to do part of this thing. Well, this is uh, one of the uh, things also that, that pops up, okay? These kind of documents are static statements. So what is the European Open Science Cloud? But Baron Mons tend to say that this, he hates, hates this name because it's not just European, it's worldwide. It's not just for science, uh, it's for any kind of matters that make sense. It's not open in the sense that everything is free and blah, blah, blah. Could be control access, could be indeed commercial in some cases. And it's not a cloud in, this, in the computing term. It's a cloud in the sense that it's a bunch of services and providers and people doing stuff, okay? But the core is that one. We will say that one researcher that is looking for marine stuff, for example, could log in somewhere and select some data sets they want to have, look for the data sets, uh, select the data sets, drop these data sets in a facility, cloud facility, let's say, and run some pipelines on that, and then get this information. And from a meeting that I come yesterday about these projects, they indeed want to have a collaborative environment for the team starting to work together just at the beginning of the project. So it's quite ambitious. It's not, it's not, well, it's ambitious. Yeah. So as I say, I, I go a little faster on that, okay? So, and, and this is very relevant for us, in for, for the community in general, because it's not that this is something additional that is there. They are trying to move everything that it's the research infrastructures and infrastructures some way or another to the European Open Science Cloud. So it's not something that you have uh, in parallel with, somewhat in parallel, but uh, not in parallel with everything else. It's something that is kind of overarching the uh, scientific services in Europe, okay? And you see indeed industry and the public sector right there. So things should converge to this. Well, so they say, okay, uh, the idea is also leverage existing infrastructures, not creating new ones, but just harmonizing everything on everything. The most relevant things that exist already. So they need to find out if the actual solution or the joining things together, it's feasible, which are the holes that are in there, which are the limitations, which are the challenges and blah, blah, blah. So they decided to uh, have a call that they call the EOS pilot, okay? The EOS pilot is trying to put some stress in these concepts and see if it's useful for very different communities. And they selected, uh, well, they, they started to do uh, two rounds of uh, demonstrators that they asked for a scientific demonstrators that run on top of this potential European Open Science Cloud. And uh, they selected some of them for the first call. Uh, one of them is in life science, and it's trying to move the pan cancer analysis to a pipeline to different places around the world, like Canada and other places. And in the second round, we have that started in July this year, we have this project that is the one that I'm, I'm coordinating uh, together with Cedric and, and so, okay? 
So in this project, we are trying to do all these things, this very long name, that it's not very uh, descriptive, well, it's kind of descriptive for me, okay? So you see we have seismology, we have cryo microscopy, we have astronomy and physics and so on, okay? I, I've been there for two days, this has been presented and the status of that has been presented. It's, it's quite interesting because you have a guy talking about the fusion of the particles, another guy talking about the uh, radio astronomy, this guy is talking about how to look at molecules from different images from a cryo-electron microscopy, so it's, it's quite of an interesting thing. Okay, uh, so we are there. <clears throat> so, which is the project that we are trying to do? We are talking to tackle this thing. I guess that you have talked about that plenty of times, okay? So, I will not say anything else about that. We just try to uh, tackle this thing with the help of them. And the idea is to try to uh, get... In the EGA, we have just the data. But if we take the data and not take the pipelines that has been used to generate this data, it's very difficult to check and to be sure that the results that has been published in the paper uh, are the ones that you can get from this data and any other pipeline or trying to reproduce the original pipeline. So we want to have a repository of um, pipelines and tools, one that already exists, and try to provide you with the original data plus the links to the pipelines that were used to process this data. So in one kind of another, you can reproduce the original results, I expect, with very little differences. Okay? This is the expectation. It's not necessarily true. Okay? But then we want to do another thing. Is Why not we take this data that has been analyzed with the genome reference uh, 36 or something like that? and try to get the same results, apply the pipeline, a new pipeline if possible, and a standard pipeline if that exists, and get the updated results for these data sets. Okay? So we will avoid that every user that downloads the data is uh, reprocessing the same thing, remapping against a new, a new uh, genome reference. And at the same time, we are providing these new results for the personalized medicine wall. Okay? So we can kind of say this would be the new results is we apply new references and new pipelines, new tools to this raw data, you will get maybe the same mutations or not. Okay? So we can put there, this mutation has been seen originally in the original paper, and uh, in, in silico we couldn't reproduce this with an updated information. Okay? We, we, it's, we need to see exactly what this thing uh, is how, how double is it and how popular is it, okay? But that's the reason this is a pilot. And eventually, we, well, we want to make everything fair, okay? I will go into fair a little bit later. So the idea is that, to get the reproducibility, to what I call the remastering of the results, and then uh, to make this data fair. What is fair? Do you know about fair? Could you raise your hand? Yeah? More or less? Okay, so wonderful. I don't need to go into this thing. So my challenge is if you really actually know what is fair, okay? Because I, I found this thing, okay? That each one is doing their own interpretation. And in this meeting, I've been in each talk, someone mentioned fair, and everyone gives a different, not definition, and they say, we are findable, but findable could mean different things, okay? So I, I put here just the original definition, this 15 criteria, that it's quite open, as you can see, okay? But when you say I'm findable, here they are clearly saying this should be a persistent identifier that it's globally unique and it's eternal, that it's a very strong word, okay? We say long-term or persistent, that it's much more easier to say something persistent than something eternal, okay? Uh, so it's not just that you are in Google or anyone else in your website or whatever. You need to have this thing, okay? Persistent identifier for uh, and global unique for your artifact, yeah? So you can read the other definitions. Some of them are not so clear. And then this is, is uh, published, okay? Not, not, not big deal. And then this, these other guys that try to do metrics on uh, how fair you are are putting some levels, different levels on this is the minimum level, uh, no fair at all, and then you have a graduation of fairness until this, that is the perfect solution, and so on, okay? So people is trying to put metering and metrics on, on, the, on the fairness of the stuff. And as I said, the difference is. So what we want to do is to 
uh, we, we enlisted these guys, I call them the fair guys, that are the ones starting to work on all this stuff from the Dutch Tech Center for Life Science in Holland. Okay, and, and they will be contributing to the project, allowing us or helping us to uh, make this data fair, uh, I will say, I'll say five stars, not just one, two or three stars, but the maximum fairness that it's possible for everything that it's public in our in our data sets. Okay? And that's exactly the, the aim of the project, to do these three things. Get the original pipeline fully reproducible with NextFlow, have the new pipeline uh, also available, potentially with NextFlow, if uh, so, and then make the data fair, and do this now in a control environment, that is the BSC, uh, National Supercomputing Center environment, but then, if uh, time permitting, trying to move this into all the facilities uh, around the world to see if we can do the process and if we can leverage uh, repositories for pipelines or tools and so on, okay? And that's all, this is the team. I didn't put here the Paolo's and Cedric teams because, well, uh, you have seen them too many times, okay? So, uh, no, no need for, for doing that, okay? Thank you. Thank you.